نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم إن زلزلة الساعة شيء عظيم صدق الله العظيم Respected listeners, we are talking about and discussing the simplicity of a sunnah nikah Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us and how to avoid and the importance of avoiding extravagant nikah and marriages. Something that was a form of Rahmah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying and telling us, أَعْضَمُ النِّسَاءِ بَرَكَ أَيْسَرُهُ مَأُونَ That the most beloved, most blessed, the best nikah, and the most Blessed where most barakat and blessings descend Though are those nikah where the most the least expense is spent in So we know this much And we can say very clearly from this hadith That if you want to just Justify If you want to see the level of barakah and Allah's Rahmah in a Nikah you put the expense to one side and the Rahmah of Allah in another side right so if the expense is low Rahmah and Allah's blessings will be higher Allah's Rahmah blessing Allah's happiness will be higher if the expense of the Nikah and the wedding is low Whereas the higher the expense goes, the less Rahmah and Barakah and Allah's blessings go. This is how you decide which is most blessed. Now we can understand where we're going to go from this. So Nikah has become what is meant to be a form of Rahmah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah's pleasure has turned today into Allah's lana and Allah's anger. And we know what happens in our nikahs today. So we've been talking about this nikah for a while. And we've been saying, <coughs> discussing the basic points. So how does a nikah work? It's a simple, simple nikah, simple wedding, Muslim wedding. Simple sunnah Muslim wedding. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the way he taught. Simple sunnah nikah, how it should be. So basically, both the families agree that we want to, I want to get my son married to your daughter. And only themselves discuss. No one else is involved in this matter. And then they see each other. The groom and the bride see each other. No one else is involved in this matter. Only the parents involved. No one else. And thereafter, the nikah is done. Meaning the sunnah. I'm talking about the sunnah. I'm not talking about what is permissible. Other things are permissible. I'm not talking about the permissibility. I'm talking about what pleases Allah and His Rasul. In where is Allah's rahmah most where do you find Allah's blessings and Allah's forgiveness and Allah's pleasure most? This method I'm talking about. There are many things that are permissible, but Allah doesn't necessarily like it. Like we said, gave an example, talaq is permissible, isn't it? But Allah, does Allah like it? So it's not liked by Allah, it's not liked by the Sharia. So there are so many things that the Sharia says permissible at the time of necessity need, but it's not liked by Allah. And you can judge from this many other things that are permissible. I'm going to mention just a few more things. That was, was the sunnah method. So this is what it is. Now the, both the, the groom and the bride are going to see each other. 
and then the nikah is done. When is the nikah done now? Straight away. Meaning they've agreed that okay, or they've done istikhara, and the istikhara is positive, etc. And thereafter, they just say, okay, let's do the nikah. And they just go to the masjid. And then inform the family members that Khailku Amar may nikah. Or I school Amar, tomorrow my daughter's nikah, my son's nikah tomorrow. Or today. This is the sunnah method. Okay? This is the most blessing. Yes, it's permissible to inform your family members before. I'm not saying it's not permissible. But remember what we're talking about. What we are talking about is where Allah's rahma and most pleasure is in. So this is where Allah's pleasure is in. Why, why, do you, why should you do an instant nikah and without informing or without inviting everyone else? Because look what happens if you were to say, okay, a couple of weeks down the line, a couple of months down the line, what happens? All these parties start. All the discussions and all the filth and garbage that happens in our weddings today, all those nonsense happen. So to avoid all that rubbish, the method is sunnah nikah, instant, inform the family members that my all relatives and inform everyone. Today the social media, message anyone, everyone that today or tomorrow my daughter's or my son's nikah is happening, alhamdulillah. Now, this is the sunnah method, my respected listeners. This is the sunnah method. This is the method where Allah and His Rasul are most pleased with. Now, if Allah and His Rasul are pleased with this, method, with this method, should I be displeased? Listen to this carefully, my respected listeners. Should I be displeased because He didn't tell me? Amid Aitamunai. He didn't tell me. All this wouldn't happen because there is no such thing as invitation. Invitation is only for walima. Not the day of nikah itself. The day of nikah is information, informing people. Don't ask the question, is it permissible? I'm not talking about permissibility. It is obviously permissible. We're not talking about permissibility here. We're talking about what is the actual sunnah, where is Allah's rahmah and Allah's blessings and Allah's forgiveness and Allah's pleasure. So this is what we're talking about. So this is where Allah's pleasure lies. Can you imagine you can avoid so many um, traditions? And what we're talking about traditions, traditions that have come into our lives from the Hindu culture and now in the Western world the Christian and other cultures, different cultures that are kept into our lives and we don't even realize that this is our this is a culture that we're following someone else and we think it's, oh, it's just normal and I'm going to just going to mention some of the things to us so then instant nikah is done you inform all the people that nikah has taken place which means there was no giving of any clothes. There's no giving of anything else. They've just agreed to a mahar. Yeah, there are mahar, few types of mahar, that is some mahar um, dowry, that is the most nece necessary to give. And there's another mahar that is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fixed for Zaydra Fat Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha and Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala between them. And there's the mahar of Rasulullah sallallahu wives. So these are the three types of mahar and dowry. Choose one, one of them. These are the most blessed ones. And the most blessed one amongst them is the mahar which was given to Sayyidah Fatima radiallahu ta'ala because she is going to be the leader of all the women in Jannah. So we might as well adopt her practice, meaning Rasulullah sallallahu own daughter's practice. Or his wives. So this is why you see mashaykh, those who are buzruks and the people who are called shuyukh and mashaykh, they will always generally choose mehr Fatima Because it's close to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa heart. So mahar is fixed. After that, she is taken to the house. So there's two methods over here. One method is Sayyidah Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anhas, where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa came and took her. 
The other method is Sayyidah Fatima radiallahu ta'ala where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa told Hazrat Umm Ayman radiallahu ta'ala that you go and drop my daughter off to Ali's house. So has, does anyone practice upon this second one now today? Where is it gone? We don't even know about it. True? We don't even know about it. So use this method. Something that's been forgotten in the Ummah. Are we not supposed to revive those, thing, those things? Revive those things that are, are beloved to Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa So this is the method where the parents drop her off to the... Uh, groom's house, the husband's house. After that, in the masjid, <coughs> the nikah is done in front of the witnesses, obviously. And the nikah, meaning the izn, the permission of the girl or the um, bride, is taken in the house. <coughs> that is not the nikah of the girl. It's just her permission. So people have termed it, Yalla mardo meyer nikah kundini no, no, they're not the nikah, the aqad, the nikah of the girl. That's not called nikah, that's called idhan, a permission. So who should take that permission? Mulana Sabrigyano, Machitani. So you see, we get Mulanas or other people who are ghair mahrams to take her idhan. Come on, I'm not going to say. So ghair mahram seeing the bride. If they don't come, then we don't know what to do. Just go and ask them what, what it is. Go and ask the ulama what you should say. The basic thing you should ask is that we are giving you in nikah to this person in exchange of this much mahar. Have you accepted him? She just has to say, yes, I have. That's it. In front of her father, her real uncle. Or her brothers who are Bali, her sisters, her khalas, meaning there should be only mahrams in the room. There should be no ghair mahrams present there. Only mahram, uh, mahram, no ghair mahram present. After that, the nikah is done in the masjid, in front of the Muslim witnesses, finished. So you take the girl to the house. After that, there is no further function beside one thing. And that is the walima. We spoke about the walima before. Walima is where you can invite people. And walima is done according to... This is where we go wrong. Walima is done according to the person, the, the husband, his level of work how much income does he have so if he can basically feed about 30 40 50 60 people that's fine alhamdulillah that's done remember the point where rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is telling us the nikah that is most blessed is where the least expenses so if he can feed 30 40 60 people that's it walima is not done where i have to feed my whole khanda this is where we make a lot of mistakes. The Allah family bro. All my families are very big. You know, I've got a large family and uh, you know um, relatives, etc. I've got a huge family. So I have to nahu muhala. again. It's permissible. No one's saying it's haram, but you're gonna lose all the barakat. You're gonna lose all the blessings. Keep it to the minimum where you can get the most blessed blessing. So feed only the number that he can feed. It doesn't mean that you can give your son thousands of pounds. And yes, a lot of parents have a lot of money to hire a hall, etc. Now hiring a hall, is it permissible or impermissible? It's permissible. Is this where Allah's Rasul would have, is this what Allah's Rasul would have done? My respected listeners, put your hand in your heart and see for yourself. Where is the blessings there? Where is the least expense there? So only a small number of people you're feeding, after that, it's finished. So now, 
everything other than all this what I've just explained is all tradition there are so many things the traditions that are permissible there are so many that are impermissible now we have brought into our nikah and weddings marriages so many impermissible things and so many other traditions remember Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said very clearly man tashabbaha bi qawmin fa huwa minhum whoever copies or imitates or follows any community qawm he, this person is considered like that qawm like that community so if we follow the mushrikeen we are considered by this hadith according to this hadith we are considered, we are called like the mushrikin. Fahuwa minhum. The meaning of fahuwa minhum, he is one of them. Now look at the words of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He or she is one of them. Now we have in our nikah, the marriages, so many traditions that we can't get out of which invites Allah's la'na. Yet we see that this is a tradition from some other culture. So Hindustan tradition from people of those um, back home, Hind, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Afghanistan, Burma, etc. That area, we have the Hindustani, Hindu traditions amongst ourselves. The people who have gone into the Western culture, Western world over here for us, for example, us, our children have grown up in this culture. So they've got a mixture of different culture Hindi English culture so we've got Hindi culture in our parents and English culture amongst ourselves the Christian or Judaism or any other culture and we mixed everything up now we don't even know what Sunnah is we, we don't even know what our value is so now all these traditions have come inside now so whatever the list I'm going to mention now is that all cultures and some of them are not permissible yet we do it just because you know this the word it's okay it's only a little fun this word it's only a only a little fun it's okay it's not why are you making a big deal out of it for yes this little little thing what shaitans introduced in the earlier days of the human race took people to worshiping idols and statues how did idol um, worship start so when someone died, when some pious person died, Shaitan came in the form of a human being and said, Why don't you look at them all the time? What are you crying for? How can you look at them? Just draw a picture of them and you can look at them all the time. People thought, actually, Actually, we can actually see them all the time. So, so the people started drawing pictures. Shaitan had something in his mind, but we didn't realize. The human race did not realize where Shaitan is coming from. We just fell for it. So the young people thought it's only a little fun. So they started drawing pictures. And then Shaitan came after a few generations. Why don't you just make pictures get you know destroyed? Why don't you just make some statues out of them and you know look at them? So they thought, yeah, actually true. Then next generation, this is the third generation we're talking about. In the third generation, Shaitan <coughs> people they used to stand in front of the statues like that and looking at them and crying. This is what happened. There's nothing wrong with it. You're just remembering your deceased and you're crying. But there was something seriously wrong with it in the new generation. So Shaitan said, so people, the young generation saw the, the elder generation there, looking at the statues and crying and sometimes, Ya Allah, making dua to Allah, Ya Allah, forgive them, etc. What do you think the young generation thought now? What, what did Shaitan do now? Shaitan saw, the young generation saw them making dua to Allah and they thought that they are making dua to the statues. The next generation started worshipping the statues. How did it start? From a little picture. So now my respected listeners, when we say, It's only a little fun, it's only a little happiness, don't be so strict. What did this lead to? Eternal Jahannam. Shirk eternal jahannam and we thought it was just fun 
So now, in our nikah, my respected listeners, come on, how many of us can say that I actually I'm not going to get a hall? Try out and see what happens, how much opposition you get from your immediate parents and your relatives and your brothers and sisters. Permissible, but look what it's led to. It's led to our poor people back home not able to do the nikah of their children, the poor children, wanting a hall, wanting this, wanting this amount of money, 50,000 taha. Who in, introduced all that? We did. We showed them that this is, this is how it should be done. Allah's la'anat has been introduced in our, in our marriages. So then all these things have started. Now Kitab Ibla, you have a cake, wedding cake. Where did that come from? Was it introduced? Who introduced it? Was it, is it Islamic? So you've got a big heart there with the name, both the names, and they're cutting it now. So that was introduced. <coughs> then the Mendi party, everyone knows the Mendi party, what happened in the Mendi party. Mendi party. Then Gaya Holoj. Haldi party, Haldi party. What's Gaya Holoj? Okay, a lot of the people have left that now. They understood the Yalla, that was seriously wrong. But you know a lot of us did it in those days. You know a lot of us, a lot of you did it in those days. Yeah, you give, yes, you've given it up, but why didn't you realize at that time that was wrong? Alhamdulillah, that's good. We've left, some, left, left something. That was filthy. Then came wedding registration party. These are all, I'm talking about my respected listeners. There's so many things that are permissible, but there are so many things that are impermissible. Allah is angry with the Muslims in our, in our nikah and weddings because of some of this filth that we've introduced. Thereafter came wedding ring or wedding watch. Now, me ring, Allah Rasulullah, ring he didn't wear the ring, so might as well give a ring or might as well give a watch, introduce a watch. Question is, did the Prophet وسلم, wear a ring in his nikah? Did he? Obviously not. Do you know that's a Christian tradition? Okay, it's a Christian tradition. They're like, I mean, I'm not going to give a ring, I'm just give a watch. You just change it to a watch instead. Why can't you just give it up? Why can't you not just ignore it? If you want to give a watch, give it later on, man. So, look what's happening. So, um, watches. And thereafter, last time I've mentioned, before the nikah, in the wedding, at uh, the mendi party, someone wanted to give a ring. Touching ghair mahram before even nikah took place, that was not permissible, but it's happening. Because we've continued, we've allowed the Mendi party, we've made it so big, now you can't even have the Mendi party in your house, you have to have, hire a hall now. So now Mendi party, where did that come from? So, uh, more expense going in there. <clears throat> After that, Sinifan or Hota. Where did the Sinifan come from? I'm talking about my respected elders here. You can't, why can you not give up these things? What is so difficult to give up these things? And you show that you're very strong in a certain different way. Why do you become weak in these matters? Why can you not remain strong in these matters? Thereafter comes the bridesmaids. Bridesmaids. So the bride has a few friends and who are going to walk with her. Who has the same clothing. Extra clothing. Same dress. Now, now the bride, she wants all her friends to have the same dress. What if someone cannot afford the same dress? Someone is struggling financially. What have you done? Now she feels ashamed or he feels ashamed that he can't, you know, he's not going to even come. Where did we get this from? Different cultures. And we can't even give up because it's only a little funny. Look what this Zekhzara Shundur led, led, um, led us to. Thereafter came <coughs> the groom's best man. 
सो ही हैज टू हैव द बेस्ट मैन विद ही विल गो स्टैंडिंग ऑल द टाइम ना ग्रूम में मत हरता ना इधर यू नो द दामने मत होइ नहीं दिन द ग्रूम कैन नॉट टॉक ऑन दैट डे व्हाई नॉट द हैज ही बिकम कितो इसे मत हरता रहे सो द द बेस्ट मैन टॉक्स ना हवा लो 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 लुक वे वे गॉन we've just lost the plot in so many ways thereafter came the <coughs> gifting the clothes to the other side of the groom's party or the other family members is gifting so someone says the question asked him well had yada wakita te kon da wrong to nai this question comes to the had yada wakita kon there's nothing wrong in giving hadia simple question my respected listener Is there anything wrong in keeping fast? Is fasting rewarded? Yes. Can you fast on Eid day? Khawato kunta wrong na. Can you um, can you eat during Ramadan when you fasting? Recitation of the Quran is it permissible and is rewarding? Yes. Can you recite the Quran in the toilet? Come on. E question hai nahi to. Hadiya de auto wrong na. Had yet they were wrong in a certain way, certain time. You don't give it because look at look at the tradition that's just happened. It's all Hindu culture, and so many people cannot afford it. But because of peer pressure, relatives pressure, they have to carry on. So this is what's happening. This is all culture. It's wrong. It's inviting Allah's rahma in our wedding, and then we see family marriages breaking. Why did it break for? Why does the family, the marriage, have so much tension in it? Because you started your marriage with Allah's lana. That's why so have so there's so much problem. Then comes what other things come up, my respected listeners today and in this day and age. You have a selfie frame. Selfie frame, okay. All the people who are getting married, let's take a selfie frame. So it's going to be selfie and framed up in somewhere. Okay, so find the groom's room or bride's room. So all ghair mahram, mahrams, each seeing each other, selfie frame. Is that permissible? You can judge for yourself. How? And next one, when the husband and wife meet each other in the in the rooms now. You know what I've seen just recently. This is where modern culture has crept in so much we don't realize. There's a champagne bottle and a champagne glass with a halal drink in. Champagne bottle, champagne glass, but the champagne bottle has just normal grape juice, halal juice. What, what what's the need for? Because alcohol khayle to you get high top doesn't it? So you can enjoy the relationship better. لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم. So this is this is introduced now in the nowadays. Where did it come from? <coughs> Baby shower. Someone now when the husband and wife are expecting, yeah Allah, I have to go and tell the um, whole hurry of shoulder ya hawa lagbo and ma bafri ya hawa lagbo. I have to tell my parents and I have to tell the whole hurry. So now then, gender reveal. Has anyone seen the gender reveals happening today? Muslim, forget. Come on, we're not talking about non-Muslims. They, they, they don't. There's no rules for them saying this is halal, this is haram, this is impermissible, this is permissible. For them, everything according to their desire is permissible. We're talking about Muslims. Where did that come from? Why do we have to do that? That was something when we say look aya ho inna. People used to be shameful of saying that our my wife is expecting. It was very shameful. It was modesty to you know close it hide it. Now gender reveal, baby shower. <clears throat> And you you can see the different things are happening in the baby showers, gender reveal today. Where did it come from? Where did it creep in from? Christian cultures, non-Muslim cultures. Remember this hadith: "Man tashabbaha bi qawmin fahuwa minhu." Whoever imitates any community of people, this person will be amongst them on the day of Qiyamah. This is what we've done. Then you've got a housewarming party, cake for the grandparents, party 
when the star, a child starts to talk, he, Allah, he, he said, Ammu, oh, he said, Abba, that's it, let's have a party. So you have a party, party for that when the child starts talking. After the marriage, the next day is breakfast party for all the relatives. Doesn't that happen? We just change the wording. We're just going to see her because she's going to feel alone, lonely, so we might as well just go. So they take breakfast. Where did he get it from? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and assist us in our deen. And thereafter comes the salami money. Just recently someone said, after I'm going to finish off now. Someone said, Manushe salami dinani. After the nikah, some people just give hadiyah to the groom and bride. So the father of the groom, he calculated the, all the salamis and he said, I spent about two and a half thousand labis. I've got a profit of two and a half thousand pounds. How? Well, it was my expense, the hall was mine, all the gold was mine, all those things were mine. Someone explained, I have to make that bucket and so salami to the so he took it from the salami. This salami was given to the bride and groom. Meaning, what is salami? Where did this salami come from? Assalamu alaikum. Afran lagi. It happened, doesn't it? But the other tradition was, when we were young, we saw this. If you give the bride, the groom 10 pounds, the groom has to give you 20 pounds if you're younger. People saw it, yes? Those elder people, they have to give you 20 pounds extra. Meaning they have to give you double the amount. That's interest. Did you not realize it was interest? Sood? La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. And all these things, my respected listeners, please, for Allah's sake, let us keep our nikah and weddings according to the sunnah method. And sometimes don't embarrass yourself by saying, I'm Mr. Nati Khurtamba, you can't do it. At least what our sincere advice is, please just remain up to halal. Now what's happening in the wedding day, in all the wedding halls? So some people say, look, Allah Rasulullah, Allah, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, when you are invited for food, you have to accept the invitation. Yes, that's true, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that. But then what happened? The condition, they forgot the condition of accepting their invitations. If you now, what do we see in the halls today? Nowadays, the tables are made, the whole family can sit down together. So all the families are together, yeah? So now all the mahrams, mahrams, men, women, all are together under one roof, in one hall, in their whole family tables. Does not not introduce and invite Allah's la'na. Free mixing. So elders who invite, who are invited for nikah, for Allah's sake, please, for Allah's sake, don't go there. Why? Are we allowed to go to mixed weddings? Is it halal? First of all, if it's a mixed wedding, you're not allowed to go. So you can just give you an excuse. Number two, if the food is doubtful, you're not allowed to go. Number three, if there's going to be music and dancing, etc., you're not allowed to go. These are I'm just giving you three conditions where you're not supposed to be going. I'm just going to reject the invitation. Okay? And there are many other, um, other reasons. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the true understanding of his deen. May Allah be pleased with May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased in both the worlds. May Allah enable us to understand and make our nikah and wedding according to the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.